Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon, Flat Earth Homeland. My, uh, not a channel, but Operation Ephraim's Rescue and Ozark Plateau Relocation Association Headquarters. Um, so I want to deal with snow, snowmageddon, and, uh, the Armageddon line, which, oddly enough, runs about right across where this sign is. Um, draw a line at I-70, probably, you know, just roughly, you know, somewhere across the middle, middle United States, I said, between coast to coast from uh, <clears throat> going from east to west, dividing the north from the south, and that is about, you know, it may be colder north of that, as it always is, but it may be extremely much colder north of that and not that much different south of that. As I said, somebody's come up with a broad idea of calling that the Armageddon line. Whatever. Okay. Today, class, <clears throat> I want to deal with practical stuff that we can do. Okay. So, I'm going to back up just a bit here. And... I left off with the last thing about preparing, things you can do. That's what we're talking about here. Okay. And I want to... This is... Irregardless if if nothing ever happens, this is one of the most amazing, impressive inventions I've ever seen. <coughs> okay, auto suck. Now that is a a trade name. It's an invention name, but there's going to be people, you know, hacking it. And there already are, you know, hack knocking it off and blah blah blah. You can order them from China. You can get them from who knows what all. Um, a lot of different brands, a lot of different designs, a lot of different names. The idea is the same. And let me hack it for you. You can make them yourself. Take some bungee cord. You can order reels of it on eBay. Get If you could find, if anybody can find, rolls of microfiber cloth, those little towels you buy at the store, that's what it is, basically. So I made some from... Um, just using uh, those and just poking holes in them and sticking, just sewing them with uh, uh, wire ties. But not, not ideal, obviously, because it's all going to fall apart pretty quick. But I was just proof testing it. The first thing I did as I was reading about these was, you know, they, they always make a comment and they use this something about microfiber. Or you can just look at the, uh, one, of the one of them up close under a microscope, magnifying glass, and you can see microfiber. So I took one of the cloths we had in the house. It had snowed. This was um, last year, no, two years ago. Whatever, I'm losing track. <laughs> and I, I spun it out like a Frisbee, and it landed on the snow, and I stepped on it, and it went to jerk my foot sideways. It did not move. I could have broken my ankle had I put... It would be like a Fran Tarkenton on AstroTurf, you know. You know, you plant your foot and turn, to make a certain sudden move, and bam, you got a busted ankle. That that would have happened. Later, I had a chance to test him. We went down to do a uh, a friend named uh, David Ray. We went down to do a wild food walk. There was a stream running through these people's. It was the border of their property, uh, about 50 feet wide, flat, slimy rocks, and they made the comment that, hey, you know, uh, the best sandals to use is not those water rubber-based water socks, but these sandals made with cords. Uh, I think they're made from East Wind Community because they have a lot of little fibers that stick. And I'm like, fiber, fiber, big fiber, microfiber. So I took a proof testing. I took my water socks. I put them on. And on the left one, I left bare. The right one, I put a microfiber cloth on it with paracord. And I went down to the stream. And I'd plant my left foot real carefully. Twist, slip. Right foot, twist, no slippy. So on slimy, mossy, snot, slicker than snot rocks, it worked. Okay, so there you go. Proof of concept, uh, you know, just that, that's, that's hacking it. So you can actually make your own if you wanted. You can make shoes with them, you know, just strap, make it so they strap on boots really quick. Okay, this scene here is Eisenhower Pass. Memorial Tunnel, 11,158. And what they did was they have a that connection device there in between those two straps is a uh, scale. 
you know, 50, uh, whatever, 40,000 pounds, 30,000 pounds, whatever. And it would re it would click when it stopped, when they started spinning, when they lost traction, it would, it would, uh, you know, stop. And they knew how much weight it would pull. They tested chains against auto socks. The auto socks won. And maybe some cases they wouldn't, but in a lot of cases, uh, they do. This is Bison Transport. Divers are checking out the latest and technologies. They issue these to all of their drivers that uh, drive for them. And they sell them at a, re at a good discount to drivers, owner, operators who drive their own trucks for them. Okay. Um, so, in this guy, that guy there, it's a video, you know, talking about it. So, uh, well, all I'm saying is, you know, I'm just going to click through these. <clears throat> They've been torture tested. This guy drove them on 10 miles of gravel road, bare gravel. Uh, yeah, of course it tore them up. That's one of the problems with them uh, going up a hill. But if you put regular chains on, you still, in other words, it's met, it's by law. You're going to Colorado, you're going up Eisenhower Pass. Okay, you got to have chains on, sir. You put your chains on. You pull out and you got five miles of bare pavement before you hit the ice or whatever. Or there's a little bit of ice and then bare pavement again. You take your chains off. It's illegal, so you got to deal with it. They're going to eat your tires up. They're going to just melt your tires down. Chains will. These won't. They'll destroy these, but these only take 10 minutes to put on. So you get out, you whip them off, you come to a bad place, you put them back on, whatever. A lot faster. All right, I'm going to buzz through this, but idea being, deal with it. Um, this is a good test. Auto socks in Telluride, Mountain Village, Colorado. Um... 25% grade, if you have any idea how steep that is, that's like insane. Uh, coming down Eisenhower, all these tunnels, all these passes. If you hit a 7% grade, you're in deep doo-doo if you're in a truck. 7% is, is bad, really bad. So this was a truck with a 55, gross weight 55,000 pounds, 15,000 pounds of food, you know, 40,000 pound truck. Altitude, 9,545 feet, 12 degrees Fahrenheit, 7.30 a.m., very icy. Now, the nutty thing about this is <clears throat> they only had two of them on. One on the driver front and one on the passenger rear. Uh, you know, in other words, on a semi, you, can have, you could have had four of them on, both your drive tires on the front and, you know, could have had eight of them on. Any, they're all gonna, always going to improve your traction. And your, uh, you have them on the front of the truck. For better steering, too. So, yeah, like on a four-wheel drive, you can put them on all four tires. Front-wheel drive, put them on the front. But hey, they're going to help your back too. So, ideally, you you could have them on all four tires on a truck, on a car. You know, fifteen thousand pounds of food, forty thousand pounds semi and trailer. So, there's another one that looks totally different. It's just like a, I don't know, like a tube top on a lady. Where you got you got to manually squish it around there. If you'll notice the auto socks, next time I come up with one, um, there's a gal putting one on. And the thing about those is they have um, they're open. The auto socks are not. They're they're covered so no snow can get packed into your tire. Keep them cleaner. I don't know. Make them easier to get on and off. I think this guy uh, so easy you can do it with one hand. Well, notice that he only has one hand, and he whips them on really easily. So. That's an auto socket. It's got an X and a kind of a clear mesh across the tire, so it's covered. The tire's covered, keeps snow from packing in there. So anyway, Denver News, 7 News, Denver, new sock for tires could replace chains. There's that funny one again, Heininger or something. Like I said, people have knocked it off. So that, that's that on that. <clears throat> um, that is something you can do. In Iowa recently, because of the a bad snowstorm, uh, I-35 was, I think it was 35, whatever, a major highway was just completely shut down for hours, maybe days. I mean, somebody crashed, and people were just driving along, too long, 55, whatever, 70, I don't know. Boom, crash, boom, crash, 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 semi. Piled in. Another semi. A tanker. So, big freaking mess um, why not have auto socks keep going stay out of them things don't get crashed don't get killed so um, yeah uh, and they're ch cheap relatively they're easy they're easy to put on 
the thing with changes, they're such a pain that very few people ever buy them and very fewer people ever use them. You know, so. I used a pair one time in Denver, I remember. Put them on a the car, had them just put brand new tires on. Drove for maybe five minutes, ten minutes, I don't know. Not that fast, because they sound terrible. And they melted the tire. They wouldn't, you know, the, peop the peop tire people said, hey, you know, it's got a pinful of chain on here. We're not going to warranty it. So, yeah. Oh, anyway. All right. So, now, that's one thing you can do. If conditions are going to be bad, and whether, like I said, forget the Grand Solar Minimum, forget sub-zero weather and all this other garbage, um, you know, you, could, you should, you could, they're cheap enough and simple enough and fast enough and light enough. I mean, you could put them in a little pouch behind the seat, pop that little bag out, boom, you know, put them on. If you need them, you got them. And, and they're good for mud, slime, slimy mud. Well, I don't, deep slimy mud would just, that's, that's a total, you know, but they'll work on slippery surfaces. I guarantee, I verified that totally. All right. So then I want to just touch on, because where, where I want to go here is getting people here to the Ozark Plateau. And I just want to mention that I want to get back to this topic. That's the only reason why I want to deal with it here quickly. And that is that um, hiking trailers to, you can drive here, preferably most, a lot of you will drive here or wherever you're going, you know, Cumberland Plateau or, you know, the Breedout States or New Mexico or Colorado. You know, if you're in Cal, if you're on a coast, get off the coast. The coast says toasts. Get away from the borders. You know, so. But basically, I'm looking at helping people get here. That's kind of my shepherding mission. So I want to deal with this just real quick. I want to tell you that I'm getting kind of come back to this issue because this is very important. Instead of carrying stuff on a backpack, if you're walking, you can go hands free. This is a uh, Nate with a Canadian prepper. It's attached to a hip belt, and the military are, are very big on these. Uh, maybe not this brand, but the, a soldier can go 70% faster using these things. Now, the guy that was uh, doing the um, uh, the Mormon handcart thing, the uh, poly meal, told me there's a lot of studies on it. So, anyway, you can carry a couple hundred pounds probably. This thing has side saddle side bags, very, very techy, very high tech. Um, okay, yeah, great, you know, thousand bucks, you know, it better be high tech. But it doesn't have a no flat wheel, which I think is just insanely stupid. So, this is Nate again, he's got a lot of mileage on one. You can pack a lot of gear there. So, that's one thing you can do, you know, get auto socks. Uh, if you, if you, if you're, if there's any possibility of you're going to end up walking, have some kind of a rolling device. I'm going to go into that later, that you can help, will help you do it. <clears throat> okay, heat, survival. Uh, what can we do? The whole bunch we can do. Uh, rocket stoves, permaculture. You know, I'm just going to go quickly through these. Paul Wheaton, the bad boy of permaculture. Yeah. And the, uh, Justin Rhodes does a lot of interviewing, travels the country. I run across him. Uh, he interviewed Paul and he goes, You're the uh, you're a bear, the big bear. And he goes, Are you a teddy bear? And he goes, No, nah, I'm a grizzly. I'm not a nice person. You know, and he isn't. He's a bad boy. <laughs> Uh, proclaimed by Jeff Lawton, the Duke of Permaculture, um, powerful advocate of Sepp Holzer's techniques, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they showed that we have the ability to feed 21 billion people without the use of petroleum or irrigation. No question. I agree with that. that don't take that with a grain of salt. Take that to the bank. So a um, little bit about Paul there. This was at a TED Talk. <clears throat> Okay. And then I'm going to deal with rocket mass heaters real quickly, and I'll do that on another video because I want to keep these all under 15 minutes. So this is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are the remnant. 